On Larry King Now, Ian Somerhalder on the popularity of the Vampire Diaries. I'm 173 years old, dating an 18 year old. I'm talking about Rob in the Cradle. The Vampire Diaries fans have a much different decibel level in which they explain to you how much they love you or the show. On the Ian Somerhalder Foundation. Empowering this next generation with the tools to run the world and save it and protect it by, by using education, empowerment, activism, and compassion. Plus, there's something really cool about falling on your face is that when you get up the next time, you're a lot wiser and a lot stronger. It's all next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now, our special guest, Ian Somerhalder. He's known for playing the role of Boone on the hit TV show Lost. In 2010, he launched Ian Somerhalder Foundation to help educate people on positively impacting the planet. He will be a celebrity correspondent on the May 4th episode of Showtime's new docuseries, Years of Living Dangerously. And you can see him as the bad boy, Vampire, Damon Salvatore, every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. on CW's The Vampire Diaries. Thursday, actually. Uh-huh. It said Thursday, and I said Tuesday. <laughs> okay, it's Thursday. Thank yeah. you for correcting me, Ian. What, how do you explain the popularity of Vampire Diaries? It's an interesting concept. I mean, this, this story particularly resonated with people both young and not so young. I think... The younger ones, you know, I, there's this weird, crazy thing that happens. I don't think they quite understand it. It's, I mean, the storytelling is awesome, but there's this weird little thing we do as humans where when you layer danger and power and sex and wisdom all together, you know, girls like bad boys, they want someone who, you know, for the most part can be powerful and sexy and sweet at the same time and for some reason, these vampire dudes get to do that. It connects. It's, yeah. it's an interesting resonance. I understand you auditioned for other vampire parts in the past. Yeah. You're a vampire. Thanks for bringing, that, thanks for bringing that up, Larry. <laughs> no, I, you know what? I auditioned for True Blood with, uh, with Alan Ball, and I dropped the ball. I blew it. Was I got in there. audition? It was a bad audition. He's a huge hero of mine. I was talking to him first. I was just so geeking out to talk to him, and then... Just couldn't drop in. But to your but it credit, worked out. Kevin Williamson, the co-creator of The Vampire Diaries, has said that if the network didn't hire you for the part of Damon, he would have walked. And I am so eternally grateful for Kevin uh, for that statement. And we bond, you know, we have an incredible bond together. How did you get in that? You, your brother's on that show, right? You and, and I have Paul, a brother. Right. I'm 173 years old, dating an 18-year-old. I'm talking about <laughs> Rob in the Cradle. <laughs> is it is acting acting or is when you play a vampire is that different no you know look the only way I mean the only way I, I work with an amazing woman this woman Ivana Chubbuck and she's probably the greatest living acting coach that's ever walked the planet and, and the only thing I've that I can equate it to is by the way Damon Salvatore is not a real guy I hate to tell anyone he lives in a fake town uh, in, in a fake environment, and the reality of it is, is the only way for that to become true to life is if I, inf or with Ivana, obviously, we coach on everything, is infuse, find the connective tissue between my life and what's going on with Damon. And, you know, I know what it's like to fight with your brother, I know what it's like to be in love, I know what it's like to be in pain, um, and so I just take whatever's going on in my life, past, present, and future, and put it into the work. So it's oh. actually quite cathartic. In ways. Oh, really? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there are scenes, big emotional blow-up scenes that literally might level you for a day. You might be depressed. You might be exuberant. It's pretty oh. interesting. Paul, who plays your brother, directed mm -hmm. one of the shows, right? He did. Did you give him a hard time? You know, <laughs> we all stepped up. I, you know, I was actually, really, I told him, I said, man, I love working with you as a director. I hate working with you as an actor. <laughs> now we're brothers. He, he killed it. He did such a great job. I was really proud of my, my brother. I'm told The Vampire Diaries ranks as the most socially, social scripted broadcast series. It has over 18 million Facebook fans, 17 million Twitter followers, 
adding up all the cast and producer followers, that's according to The Hollywood Reporter. How do you count for that? I, I mean, think that's amazing. Authenticity. I think that the show speaks for itself and the storytelling lends itself to having an engagement. But the social media that comes from all of us, you know, you're, you're just putting bits of your heart and soul out there and you're just exchanging information. I mean, for us, even what we did for, for BP, uh, and now that we're on camera, thank you for doing that. That was uh, on my old show on CNN yeah, for the yeah. BP uh, tragedy in the Louisiana yeah. waters. But social media, but social media in that, in that you know, horrific BP oil spill, social media played a huge part in raising money, raising awareness, really getting down there to, uh, to see what was going on because I knew something was up. And I, by the way, I live in the media. I'm with you. I love the media. But I knew what was being said at times was not true. And I went down there and I called my boat captain and we went out on the lake, I mean, into the, into the Gulf. And they said the slicks were maybe, you know, 100 feet wide and they were 34 miles offshore. And that wasn't the case. The slicks were a mile and a half wide and they were 14 miles offshore. So, and social media allowed me to, you know, to relay this information. Julie Pleck was recently here, who is the showrunner of your, She Loves You, the showrunner of the show. And she mentioned how fans are extremely passionate in what they want. They ask for things. Do people approach you with suggestions about the show? I think they're more. She says she gets them all. The I think time. they're more like demands, <laughs> um, demands, and uh, demands being thrown at me and bras. <laughs> really, it's pretty interesting. Uh, it's really an amazing. Here's the deal. Obviously, you know, you're in front of people all the time. Telev series television. You're you're in front of people every week. They're in their homes. They're watching you. Maybe they're watching it on their iPad, whether it's in their car, in their bed. And they have this relationship with you. And so when you meet these people, um, I appreciate every one of them. When you touch them or you hug them or you shake their hands, you feel that energy. It's infectious, you know? You get very involved, don't you? You're yeah, absolutely. What else are we here? What else are we going to do while we're waiting to die? He's quite a guy. It's great having him with us. Ian Summerhall. His commitment to making the world a better place. We'll talk about that right after this. Ian Summerhall is our guest, star of The Vampire Diaries. Uh, you're appearing as a correspondent for an episode of Showtime's documentary series, The Years of Living Dangerously. That was a famous title of a movie. It was a movie, yeah. yeah. Tell me about this. What is this? Obviously, getting a show like Lost and Vampire Diaries changed my life, but I think this ultimately is the most important project any of us have ever been a part of. Jerry Weintraub said that. James Cameron said that. I... <sighs> You know, when you get a, call, a phone call from your manager and she says, hey, listen, Showtime is doing this show. This guy's from 60 Minutes went to Showtime. They said, we want to do a show that's 60 Minutes meets Homeland, but it's true. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. And then she starts rattling off all these names, Matt Damon, Harrison Ford, Don Cheadle, Leslie Stahl, Thomas Friedman, and you. And I jumped out of my chair and I, wait, I said, what? And uh, that was one of the most memorable phone calls I've ever had. And so it led to what? What it led to, uh, ultimately, is the most empowering understanding. You know, James Cameron even said it. This is the most important story of our time. It's not about just saving polar bears. It's about saving us. And it's very much a human story. Nine, it's uh, nine episodes. I mean, I hate this word, but celebrity correspondence. Mouthpieces uh, with amplifiers whether it's, you know, look at Harrison and just the, the mouthpiece this man is, but... And now integrating that with social media and the fact that David Nevins, so grateful to him, could have put a, a comedy in that slot, 10 p.m. Sundays, so on a school night, people are at home watching TV. Now, I understand your episode is titled Ice and Brimstone. You, you go to North Carolina to listen to both sides of an evangelical community's debate on climate change. Yeah. And what is your role there? Well, the idea is, um, I, you know, I learned a lot uh, from people like you and Anderson Cooper and uh, Tom Brokaw, all these amazing people. The idea is, actually, I think the, the episode is named called Preacher's Daughter and then Ice and Brimstone. I think they're tying mine in with Leslie Stahl's, which, by the way, how cool is that, man? I mean, it's like coupled with Leslie Stahl. She's a legend. There's an evangelical preacher. He actually bought Jim and Tammy Faye Baker's old compound. 
And he turned it into this magnificent center of learning and compassion. And he's a wildly intelligent man, great father. Doesn't believe in climate change. I mean, I want to say, don't quote me on I think in India alone they have something like 18,000 churches. This man has an extreme amount of influence. But he doesn't believe in the science of climate change. And I think because politics and religion are so inextricably linked that it really muddies the water. Um, or actually, I should rephrase that. It doesn't muddy the water. It polarizes it. So you interview him? Is that I interview him as a correspondent. And his, oddly enough, his daughter works for uh, Sierra Club for Beyond Coal, which, by the way, this woman, Marianne Hitt, who leads that, I mean, they've taken, I want to say, don't quote me on it, 158 coal-fired power plants offline which is the equivalent of taking 45 million cars off the road. These people are extraordinary. So how did you handle the preacher? You know what? Uh, I, I love this man, and, and I want him to understand that... I, here's the question. Um, he calls himself a steward of God, which I think is great. Inspires people. But as a steward of God, the question that we have is, don't you think it's your responsibility to tell your congregation, your followers, the truth that this science exists. And James Cameron said it exactly. You know, 99% of, 99 out of 100 scientists say climate change is real and it's happening and it's man-made. How would you not believe that? I know, so this, that's the point. So mm. if you had to have a surgery, right, and 99 doctors told you, Larry, <laughs> you have to have this surgery, would you go to that 100th doctor for that 100th opinion? Nuts. I wouldn't think so. So Did you change his mind, or you just you know? I think we gave him a significant amount of information. Um, I aim to give him enough information in a practical sense that he can actually go to his congregation and and with uns with due certainty say, "This is happening. It's not just in God's hands. We we have the power to to do this." You think he'll change his mind? You know well. I promised David Nevins and Matt Blanc and Jerry Weintraub I would, which is probably a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I will you, you will. I will What's the you. Ian Somerhalder Foundation? Man, uh, it's my baby's baby and probably my greatest pride, uh, other than my niece and nephew and my friends and family. What does it do? You know, in a collaborative spirit, harnessing the power of youth you know, the most underutilized, underprivileged, uh, underutilized, undervalued, and, and, and underused group of people in the world are our youth, yet they make up half the population and they're gonna be running the world. So why wouldn't we give them the tools to actually do that? And it's the most incredible thing, Larry. When we're done, I'll show you a picture of um, these community crews. Basically, we're in 150 plus countries. We built this in three years. We work directly with uh, with the president's administration, with people, I mean, the most incredible people in the world. Doing. Leveraging entertainment value and using social media to create quantifiable global change is basically what we're doing. I mean, everything, it's habitat and species conservation with a focus on youth education. So basically empowering this next generation with the tools to run the world and save it and protect it by, by using education, empowerment, activism, and compassion. Is this as important in your life as your career? It is, absolutely. But one needs the other. Yeah. You know? Being known as the first original to die on loss. <laughs> <laughs> More after this. We're back with Ian Somerhalder, a truly involved citizen of the world. Excellent. He's had two hugely popular cult-like TV series. How many get that in a lifetime? Vampire Diaries and Lost. Equally famous for both? Yeah, I mean, the, the only difference is, is the, the, uh, the Vampire Diaries fans have a much different decibel level in which they explain to you how much they love you or the show. It's pretty extraordinary. How long were you on Lost before you died? A year. First one cast, first one killed. Um, Did you know it was going to happen? I did, you know, we found out about it right after, uh, we had just gone to the Golden Globes. Uh, we had been nominated for multiple things. It was the most extraordinary, surreal experience. Hanging out with Morgan Freeman and Mick Jagger and all these guys on the red carpet of Golden Globes. I mean, I got out of that car and I just thought, what the <laughs> hell is going on? Like, this is amazing. 
And uh, luckily they told me while I was in wine country um, with a beautiful woman, because had I been, you know, like stuck in traffic in LA, I probably would have just, who knows what Did I would have they tell done. you they're gonna kill you? Yeah, it was a story point. You know what, looking back, and this is why I'm so grateful I found this woman, Ivana Chubbuck. Looking back, I probably could have infused a lot more levity into the role and, you know, uh, who knows? You never know. I mean, it's a story point. You, it's, it really isn't personal, but then you think, wow, it's personal, you know? How did the cast, did they give you a party? We, uh, we partied quite a bit, actually. I'm did from you? New Orleans, man, when, you know, funerals are parties. <laughs> Do you stay in touch with the cast? Yeah, they're, we're all extremely close. You, you were a working character a long time, right? You started young, right? Working. I started acting at, when I was about seven, but I started working professionally when I was 10, 25 years. How did losses affect the career? Straight up. I and think. then, but here's the problem. You know, big network, big commercial thing. Um, you know, when you're on a TV show, you're pretty much selling beer and cars. Well, Vampire Diaries is more like Biore strips and, uh, and something else. But you know what? I wanted, to leave that, I wanted to leave that show, and I said, you know what? Screw this, man. I want to go be Johnny Depp. I want to go do independent movies. I want to go do theater. And I did, much to the chagrin of my management. And uh, I fell off the face of the planet. And I learned a lot about momentum. A lot. But in that time period, the breakdown really created the buildup. You know, I moved to Venice, bought a house, built my nest, and then tried to center myself, you know? And there's something really cool about falling on your face is that when you get up the next time, you're a lot wiser and a lot stronger. Are you ready for the big screen? I am. I am. I was, I was at a, I was this morning at a show and they had us on this uh, amazing huge screen in this new theater on Wilshire, the new uh, IPIC theater, which you should check out. So comfortable. I was watching myself on the screen and I thought, damn, it's been a really long time since I've seen myself on one of those screens. Are you going to be in movies? I am. Yeah, you should, man. You got I am. Great looking, you can really act. Well, I appreciate it. No, I mean, I, when I'm building a company now to just that we can, I, I have been very fortunate enough to, uh, start a green energy company that, uh, it's called Go Green Mobile Power, and we are greening the oil and gas industry, you know, Department of Defense, all these amazing things. So I'm gonna be able to utilize that. Uh, so you use your celebrity, don't you? To the best of my ability. Yeah. You met with the president, did you not? Yeah. What was the occasion? He's a cool guy. You know, that administration's smart. They, they wanted to know, he even said, he goes, listen, there are a lot of things going on out there I don't know. Uh, what is said it, that to you? What is it that you know that, that I need to know? You know? And I think what it was was, well, Mr. President, I think that the youth of this country, which are the potential voters, want investment in clean energy. They want to know they're going to have health care and they're going to be taken care of. They want to know that they're going to be able to be educated. Why is it in this country you know, it costs $60,000 to send a kid to college. You know, I mean, how, how is that? People can't even afford to do things like that anymore, and, and especially after the whole collapse of everything. So building a better, greener, smarter America seems like the only way to go, you know? I can't imagine why not. You know, many progressives are unhappy with the president. Are you? You know, how in the world can you step into, I mean, a storm from hell, which is the United States of America coming into that presidency? Is anyone ever happy with any president? I mean, you can take all the polls you want. I mean, have you ever walked up to someone and said, do you agree with everything the president's doing? I mean, no, it's, it's impossible. It's an impossibility. Um, and I know Gallup can show you this and that, and I love them, they're amazing people, but how do you ever, how do you ever quantify that? I mean, this man stepped into one of the, the absolute worst job in the world. It is the worst job on Why the planet. Why would anyone want it? I'd rather be pulling bodies out of the Ganges or like, <laughs> you know, I'd be anything than that job. Why do you like acting? It's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. I think. 
Why do you like why do you like being Larry King? I always wanted to be it when I was five years old. I yeah. never wanted to be anything else but a broadcaster. I but wanted to be an actor at seven. Did you remember, you, did you see a movie and say, I wanted to do that? Was it a play? Was it, you know what I remember watching uh, when I was a kid? I remember watching Cool Hand Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate. And watching that, and uh, it's funny because I, after seeing that movie, I just wanted to be like, you know, a blonde-headed, blue-eyed dude who was uh, Paul Newman. Ian will answer your social media questions and play a game of If You Only Knew when we come back. We're back with Ian Summerhalder. He stars in The Vampire Diaries Thursday nights at 8 p.m. on the CW Network. We have some social media questions for you. What you got? At Lovely Luxactic X, where do you see... Um, ISF in the next five years. What projects would you like to see accomplished? Wow, that's an easy, that's easy. Uh, we created a curriculum called the U Factor and really building schools around it, which is about unlocking potential in young people. Incredible, incredible, incredible curriculum. Uh, and then building this animal sanctuary, we're building an animal sanctuary to take uh, troubled youth and mix them with uh, troubled and abandoned, abused animals. So the bully sees the bullied, and uh, just they just mm. grow compassionately together. Still live in Louisiana? Yeah. Well, I mean, I live in Atlanta, but mm. I'm building all my infrastructure in Louisiana. Is vampire shot in Atlanta? Mm -hmm. mm. Been there five years. At Damon and Atlanta 11, what will Damon be doing th uh, through for the rest of the season, and what's next for Delena? I would really love if Damon would just get on a plane and fly to a Caribbean island, get a case of some rare rum, a couple sprigs of mint, and just chill out for a while. What about Delena? You know, it's so funny, man. Everybody says God, they want this, you know, they want Elena to be with Damon, and I just think, sit, do you guys watch this show? I mean, we've killed her whole family, we've killed her, caused her to burn her house down. I mean, we've destroyed this young woman's life, and also, too, if you're 173 years old, man, you might want to date someone your age. <laughs> At TVD Fan Central, what do you plan on doing after The Vampire Diaries, and what shows do you watch on TV? I just want to make movies. I want to make movies, content, shows. Uh, you know, unfortunately, man, I never get to watch TV. I have seven companies now and the foundation and the show. So this summer, I am literally going to live in hotels, and I'm going to watch... Game of Thrones, I want to finish watching The Wire. I want to enjoy all of these. I'm behind on every movie. I have a stack of Oscar screeners, SAG, Critics' Choice, all that stuff. Wow. I'm just going to go through it. I'm just going to veg out. CSI 924 Girl, would you ever consider working behind the camera? Oh, I definitely plan on it. I mean, I hope to be producing and directing and writing movies and television shows until I can't walk. At the Lena is Endgame, the funniest moment you've had on the set this season? This season? Wow, man. Uh, I'm naked a lot. Are you? And I really like to mess with the crew. Because, you know, they're these, like, tough southern Atlanta <laughs> guys. And they're your brothers. They're my brothers and my sisters. And, uh, you know, when I get out of bed or walk around, hey, brother, how are you? Get away from me, Ian. You know, it's pretty funny to have... Uh, to have that kind of... Uh, and there is a website called Ian Appre at Ian Appreciation. Maggie wow. Grace recently voiced her desire to work with you again. What are your thoughts? Can you make it happen? I would love to do that. Um, I, I love her dealer. We are very, very close, and she is a wildly talented, beautiful human being. Yeah, we plan on it. Now a little game of if you only knew. I just throw things at you. If Remember I only the, knew. Yeah, first girl you kissed. Whew. Her name was Jamie... Rainy, and I was really young. Where was this? Um, under her, sitting on her bunk bed, and I think her little brother was up there, and he leaned How old in. were you? Oh, man, like five. In Louisiana? Well, my brother was eight, seven years older than me, so I learned a lot fast. <laughs> what makes you feel most alive? Right now, talking about all this great stuff. Vampire, werewolf, or witch? Oh, vampire, I just know how to do it. Which role has been the most personal to you? This one. Patrick Bateman or Sean Bateman? Uh, Patrick is a little, uh, he's a little dark, that one. I, I'd go with Sean. Favorite vacation spot? 
Oh, man. French Polynesia. Or, by the way, just walking on my property in Louisiana with a, a bourbon and my dogs and my dad. What a nice thought. It's so nice. Superpower you'd love to have. You know that thing that Damon, there's this thing Damon can do where he compels you to do whatever you want, whether it's give you a car, panties, whatever. But if I had that, um, you know, I'd, I'd use it for some pretty good stuff. I'd probably go to the White House and talk some sense into some people. I'd like to be invisible. Uh, and ain't gonna happen, Larry. Shannon, Locke, or Hurley? Well, what are we doing? Are we hanging know. out? Are we hanging out, up? I guess. Or are we walking through a coconut grove? Uh, can I just have them all together? Okay, if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it choose? Oh, man. Wow. Put me on the spot there, Larry. You know, I'd love to sit with Gandhi. Your house is on fire. What's the one thing you save? My animals. Time travel or space travel? Space travel is already going to happen. I would go with time. Me too. One thing you'd love to accomplish this year? I want to get my sanctuary built. I want to get this animal sanctuary built, and I want to get U-Factor launched, and, uh, and I want to put some movies together. Actor you'd love to work with? Oh, man, there's so many of them. You know, I'd, I'd, I, Robert Downey Jr. Just yeah. is one of those guys. It's, well, he's one of the reasons I wanted to become an actor myself. Chaplin, one of the great performances oh, ever. Unbelievable. Favorite book? Wow. Uh, favorite book, favorite book, favorite book. I, man, there's so many of them. You have one? Mine was Catcher in the Rye. You know, Catcher in the Rye, I love. I read it five times. I remember when I was 16, my, my, uh, my kind of surrogate mom literally gave me, when I moved off to go be a professional model again at, the same, at 16, she handed me this book uh, called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And uh, I read it over and over and over again. And it was just this really cool wow. grounding perspective. You know, I'd love to give to young, young people. You're a great man, Ian. Can't thank you enough, Thank Larry. you. My pleasure. Truly. Thanks for all of this, man. I want to thank my guest, Ian Summerhalder. Make sure you watch The Vampire Diaries on Thursdays, 8 o'clock Eastern on CW. And you can see his episode of Showtime's Years of Living Dangerously on May 4th at 10 p.m. And remember, you can find me on Twitter at KingsThings. I'll see you next time.